What's going on, you guys? Welcome back. Uh, last video, we were working on our cheap budget uh, street truck, race truck build. Got our fuel lines mocked up, got our coolant lines mocked up. Uh, went ahead and ordered the fittings that I was missing or that I needed. And all that stuff, I mean, it is tedious work building hoses, routing, stuff like that. It seems it like it takes forever. And um, I think it probably takes a good 20 minutes or so to build each line. We got to cut, we got to measure, cut, uh, attach the fitting, right? So I think it's pretty good to say it takes about 20 minutes a hose to make. And the amount of time it takes me to make two hoses, I have gotten this done. So we got the whole truck pretty much blown apart. Uh, turbo kit, everything sitting in the back there. Got our radiator support. This front fender sitting off to the side. And that's because I need to get this engine back out. I want to clean up the firewall. I need to finish welding up that guy there. Get all that cleaned up. Get some seam seal. Or not seam seal. Some undercoating sprayed up along the bottom there. Get all the dirt, oil, and grease off our firewall so I can get it painted that color. I really want this thing to kind of grab people's attention when they walk by with the hood open. So, what? Very easy. I mean, everything's really, really accessible to get to. I, it did. It actually took me about just over 30, between 30 and 40 minutes, give or take a couple. Definitely over 30, but not 40. Uh, like I said, I've been trying to build this truck for everything to be real accessible, easy to get to in case it breaks down. I have to rebuild or tear into it on the side of the road. So, uh, but yeah, pretty much got all the hardware out. I'm going to get this engine out, get it sitting on these guys right here so I can roll it out of the way. Uh, get it pushed to the front of the shop. And uh, that way we can get it cleaned up. Trying to get, trying to hurry, trying to, uh, I don't know if you can see the trees are moving and all that stuff. We got another storm coming. So, huh, trying to, trying to beat it, trying to see how far I can get. So, fingers crossed. But anyways, get you in the stand there. Go ahead, get this engine pulled out so we can get on the little ro roller dolly things. And then, uh, yeah, have at it. So, here we go. engine is out and on the ground i have also gone ahead and removed this little screen up here off the cow got our wiper motor and blades off that way i can get all the trash cleaned out from underneath that um, if you're wondering how this little guy comes off there's a screw underneath each side right there and of course that's make a now it doesn't want to come off but that guy comes off it just slides into there so you're going to need to get that screw out of the corner, screw in each corner there. And then of course there's a Phillips screw inside each one of these. At least it was for mine. You may or may not have a different screw. Like I've seen some of them with Torx. So be aware of that. Um, wiper motor, three 10 millimeter bolts off the front face here. Underneath the screen there is, I'll show you here while we got it out. That way you know, let's see here, where is it? There it is. So right there, it's a 13 millimeter nut and it just goes on that little shaft right there. It's spline shaft. So just remember when you go put wiper blades back on or put that motor back on to plug it in, leave the wiper blades off, leave your little arm off, of course. Uh, turn the car on, put power, turn your wiper motor on and off make sure it resets where it's supposed to be because i have seen guys take those uh, arms and stuff off and then just put them back on not checking and it will fold the torque in that motor will fold those wiper blades up so if you're going to take it off 
at least make sure to plug everything back in and function it, shut it off so it resets before putting your arms back on because it could be a real mess if you don't. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, got all that out of the way. Uh, transmission is hanging by a strap. I am going to get that up in the air here shortly to get that out as well. But what I do need to do is uh, I need to start getting this stuff off. So there's uh, 10 millimeter bolts in this bus bar here. This is just sitting on there with one 10 millimeter bolts. There are a bunch of 10 millimeters throughout the firewall I need to get out because those are holding the AC and heater box behind the dash. Uh, seven millimeter to get that guy off and then we can get all those cut wires out, get them pushed inside. And then we are one step closer to getting this thing pushed up front. I really am trying to beat the storm right now. So also got to go ahead and weld this guy in place right now before I do any of that or before I get it cleaned up. <sighs> Tedious stuff, right? You think about it now, I probably should have at least addressed all this stuff when I had the engine out or the big block out the first time. I just kind of like fitting things first. See what, just to kind of see where everything goes, what I need, because I'm, I'm really don't like cutting on freshly painted stuff. And then when you start messing around, like see, I got a couple little scratches there. I got a couple little fingers. It's just, it starts to get dinged and dented and kind of dirtied up a little bit. So I try to fit everything first, get it all where I need it. That way when I paint it, everything goes back in. It's less likely I got to touch it up or cut more holes in it. At least that's always the plan. doesn't always work out that way. But anyways, get you guys set up in the stand as well, or two. I'll start blasting some of this stuff off the firewall, get that thing welded up so we can start cleaning, the, uh, cleaning this truck up. Got most of the stuff off the firewall. Uh, I still have to get the uh, brake booster master cylinder off. I did eliminate all this ABS junk right here. I need to pick up some new uh, brake lines. I'll remake those uh, and I'll just go right to where they have their own factory union. So I'll put from here and down there. I'll start from those, make new lines, and then bring them up, tie them into the master cylinder. So, but it cleans. It does clean all that up really well. I do still have to run inside, take out the bolts behind the booster so I can get that assembly off. Um, I'm gonna clean around the column the best I can. I'll tape it off at the far. It's got a nice big gap there, so plenty of room for me to tape it off there. I have a new throttle cable, so that's gonna come off. Uh, I still gotta get the heater and AC box out from behind there, but Went ahead and took all the bolts out on this side and then cut off some of the studs we are not using. Now, if the studs are white, you can cut them off. Um, this one, wherever it is, there we go. Right down here, this one's copper. This one has a uh, ground. This is your body ground, body to frame ground. So if it's a copper color, don't cut them off. Also, we went ahead and... Uh, Welded and cleaned up this area here where I cut for our four inch exhaust. Came out fairly good, uh, fairly decent. So good enough for what we're going to do with the truck. And then all of this area here, here is going to be this color red. And then from this line, where are we at? This line underneath this line. So back under here with the frame. All up underneath there, all that is going to be undercoating. So I got it pushed up here. I'm going to get a wire wheel and start wire wheeling a bunch of this stuff off the frame, uh, scraping, 
trying to clean it up the best I can. That way we can throw some primer and some paint on it. Probably not going to happen tonight. As you can see, it is getting dark, but at least I can, I'll drag out a couple spotlights and uh, start scraping and digging away at it. morning we're good afternoon because i mean that's what it is here still kind of gloomy outside didn't get as stormy as i thought it was going to be uh, last night so that was good i was able to kind of stay up a little bit later and get some more work done on this um i do have a lot of the frame cleaned up and you can see right there i did a test spot last night because i was getting kind of anxious impatient and i wanted to see how this uh paint would kind of lay down on the frame and uh well, here's what we got. So I really think this is gonna turn out really nice. It's gonna look really good. Everything all cleaned up and repainted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, steering box. I gotta get that off so I can get all that steering linkage out of the way and get farther up behind there and get all that cleaned out behind there. Get all the junk cleaned off there. I do have a whole rebuild kit for the front sitting right there. I am just waiting some uh, lower ball joints for whatever reason i ordered this kit and if you're like me you order parts and then it sits in a corner forever <laughs> um i should have opened that box when i got it because when i opened it up last night i was missing one of the lower ball joints so and instead of just calling and griping about it i went on ebay looked up uh, lower ball joints for this truck from the same company for like 26 bucks 28 bucks for a set so I just went ahead to order a set. I'm waiting for those to come. Um, I ordered a refresh kit for our 4L60E transmission. Now, I haven't rebuilt one of those. And if you guys want to see a full video on all the, on if I can do it, I'm pretty, I know I can, but it'll be a learning experience for me as well as you guys. Let me know, put that down in the comments. I have rebuilt a 4R75E transmission, and uh, that is still kicking, still going strong. Guy's been super happy with it. So I figured if I can do that one, I should be able to do a 4L60E. Uh, it is just going to be a refresh kit, though. I didn't want to go too crazy on it. I am will be looking for a 4L80 for this truck. I want the overdrive, and I want it a little bit stronger. But really, the, that one right there, the one that was in this truck, was behind the big block that I have sitting underneath that table and it pulled almost 10,000 pounds and I drove it around town for a while. Uh, it did pretty good unless I really got into it and then it would slip third and fourth, which I mean that transmission has a lot of miles on it. So it owes me nothing. I figured, you know what, let's just do a refresh kit, new clutches, seals, stuff like that. We'll knock that out. Um, also, you see back there on the bed, got the dash out of this truck. Here is our heater core and AC assembly. Got all that sitting up here. Got everything out. Went through that front loom, pulled that out. So there's most of the wiring out of the way. There's the factory ECU. And uh, I don't know if any of that works. I know when I first purchased the truck many years ago, nothing worked. And... Uh, it was always having little electrical gremlins. Windows wouldn't work sometimes. Then they'd work. Mirrors didn't work. Then they would. Same with the door locks. Just, it was a nightmare. And when I pulled my trailer from California to here in this truck, every time I turned the flashes on, it set the brakes. So that was an adventure. But here's a small example of what I pulled out. So I cut everything away, and that's just a small bit. There's more of it still inside the truck. But you can see, like, all this stuff here. It was just nested and weaved and cut and spliced. You can see all these little guys right here were cut into 
the factory harness twisted together with electrical tape. And uh, that was probably because they ran out of those things there. So, and there's still quite a bit more in that truck too. But these things were everywhere. Uh, little sections of the factory harness cut, spliced back together. Kind of a nightmare. So, I got my work cut off for me. Um, I still do have to thin the harness out a little bit. There's still a bunch of stuff I am not using, which I'll show you here. So, see, the dash is out. Here's that one harness that was up front. Got everything thinned out of there. I just need to go through and depin all those guys from the bulkhead. So, won't be using any of that, but I will be using these. And we can reuse the factory bulkhead. Um, a lot of this stuff I don't need. Like, here's more heater controls and stuff like that. All that can come out. Um, speaker wires, won't need that. This guy right here, these are, those are my headlight controls, so we will be using that. Got the flasher. There's a couple other little things here. Oh, yeah. This is the factory wiring for all the gauges and stuff. Won't be using that. I do have new gauges coming, and I will be making my own dash. Whoops. Huh. We'll be making my own dash for this thing, so got all of eBay. But, you know, uh, GPS, speedometer, it's got a tack, all the gauges I need for fuel, fuel level, oil, volts, water temp, all with red backlighting. So I think that'll look really cool behind the dash. Dash is getting painted. Um, I'm interested to see. I ordered a cap for the top of that dash because that one's oops, sun has not been kind to it. So I'm really interested to see how that fits. But... A lot, a lot, a lot of work still needs to be done. And uh, for me, fingers crossed I can get this thing finished to do what I want. Um, so now that the uh, heater core and all of that's out, you guys know that there's a bunch of holes on the firewall of this truck. So I'm going to make a uh, patch panel for this side. I just took a piece of paper, kind of cut it slightly smaller from what I want. So it goes up underneath the lip there. Made sure, and I just took a razor blade and cut it like three eighths of an inch back all the way around all the uh, the spots I wanted, and then took our tape and put it right up to the line of where I want it to be. So we're gonna cut that patch out. There are a couple high spots behind here that I'm gonna cut out as well. I do not need them, and I want this panel to lay as flat as possible. So there's our pattern. And what I'm gonna do is take that off. And there's a reason why I hold on to some stuff like this. Here is our patch panel there. I'm going to take that pattern, tape it over the top of that thing, and cut it out. We'll take it. We'll use some, uh, some silicone behind it to kind of help seal it off. I got a bunch of little holes marked or little spots marked around the perimeter of this patch panel here. So we get it set into place. I got... Some stainless hardware to secure it. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get that off. Get that template cut out. I'll bring you guys back here in a second. Show you what it looks like uh, on the truck. So, be right back. All right. There is our panel. It has already been cut. Uh, I've gone ahead and test fit it to the firewall already. Pre-drilled all the holes, made sure that uh, I had enough hardware to screw it in. Kind of preformed some of it a little bit, like down here, just in the corners where it has to kind of wrap around on the little contours of our firewall, just so it comes down and wraps into here. It actually fits pretty tight. And I don't know if you guys can hear it. Probably can. This mic picks up quite a bit sometimes. Uh, but it is raining outside, so I'm not going to be able to push my stuff out, but that's not going to stop me. What I want to do is uh, go ahead. I've got some Simple Green in a bottle here. i got some green scotch Bright up there on the cow. I'm going to go ahead and clean that part of the firewall, get all the dirt, grime, get it kind of prepped. I've got some, red, uh, some primer down there. 
I want to spray over all those bare metal spots. Let that set up. Um, come back, put some silicone up inside here. Kind of help it stick to the remaining part of our firewall. Get that screwed in. And then while we're waiting for the uh, silicone to dry and hold that, kind of glue that in place, because I want to pull all that hardware out. I want to have everything painted red, of course, but I don't want to paint the stainless hardware red. I want to kind of keep that stainless. Worst case scenario, I got to buy new stainless, but what I want to do is let the silicone set up, let everything kind of glue itself in there, and then pull the hardware out. Anyways, while we're waiting for all of that to dry, I'll go ahead and get this uh, steering box out. I'll get the uh, part of our steering column out as well. Get that booster off the firewall so we can clean up all of that. Continue cleaning up that stuff, getting it ready for some paint. What I want to try to do before the end of this, for the end of the day, basically, or the end of this video, is I want to get that underside edge up underneath that lip, get all that with some undercoating. Get this, at least this whole front area right here, get all that painted in red. Of course, I'll uh, touch up the sides and stuff, trying to get everything up in here. These doors are coming off, so I'll be able to get address that later, but I want to get all of this painted, cleaned up, firewall painted. Get ready to start rebuilding on the front suspension here and get this engine back in so we can start putting this front end back together so oh, quite a bit to do but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get you guys in the stand i'll get cleaning up on this part get some uh, primer on there that way we can get this piece uh back on the car wall Firewall's all cleaned up. Got about two coats of primer right there. Uh, it is dry to the touch now. It's been about, I want to say, close to about a half an hour since the last coat was put on. While I was waiting for that to dry, I went ahead and cleaned up the rest of our firewall as well. Got that booster out. Got our steering column, our steering shaft undone from the column. Got all that stuff taped up. So... What I want to do right now is I'll put you guys up here in the stand. I'm going to put about one coat of red over this primer. Let it set up. Then I'll go ahead and put some silicone around our plate. Get that attached to the firewall. And then uh, we'll let that cure up before pulling the screws out. So go ahead and get you up here. And uh, put our first coat of red on. I'm really interested to see how this looks. So. She look pretty good. All right, you guys, so this thing is not perfect by any means. Um, there are some imperfections here and there. Uh, I mean, we painted it with spray paint. Um, there's no inner fenders. Rocks are going to chip it. They're going to scratch, fly up and scratch the firewall. Um, it's a fair weather truck. It's a drag and drive truck. Uh, chances are I'm going to have this thing blown apart in a parking lot, side of the road, and then at some kind of event somewhere, rebuilding or swapping out engines because I build them with junkyard parts in the cheapest way possible because I want to have fun. 
And that is what this truck is all about. We're building it to have fun. We're building it cheap, doing it, doing it myself. Um, so, but it is going to look really, really cool. And if I scratch it or bang it up or ding it up or whatever, I can grab another can of spray paint, lightly scuff it with some Scotch Brite, touch it up. You know what? And, and I'm not going to lose any sleep if I just scratch the heck out of this thing or bang it up. So, with all that being said, here's what we got. And I'm telling you guys, that red is actually a lot brighter in person. Um, it looks really, really cool. We got all the way up underneath the windshield, all the way around into the jams. Now, I will have to get to the backside of the jams, but I'll do that when I get the doors off. Went through, scrubbed, and cleaned everything. And it is going to look really, really cool, especially when I finish up the frame back here. I got to do some more cleaning up back there and underneath the firewall on both sides. We'll get all that stuff cleaned off so we can get some paint. I got to get these brake lines blown off, get those out of the way. I got new ones coming. We'll get the steering box off and all of that front end steering components off as well. We got a whole bunch of new parts, new cab mounts. So we can start putting this thing back together to the point where it is going to be almost brand new. Should handle like a dream. Um, I got new brake calipers coming. I've got, uh, I think I mentioned it. I've got a dash, a top of the dash coming so we can try to save on that. But that just, that is just going to look really cool. And it's doing, it's going to do exactly what I want, which is grab somebody's attention, right? The hood's up. They're going to walk by and just, <laughs> so. Just a whole lot of fun with this thing. I'm gonna have fun with it. Like I said, you got it's a fair weather truck. It's a drag and drive truck. Trying to get this up back together for uh, upcoming events. So, and if I bang it, I'm out. I'm, I'm not only out a few bucks, but it, it is starting to look really cool. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you like the red? Uh, if you were building one of these or something like this. What color scheme would you go with? I want to know, right? I want to have fun with this, interact. But the paint is still a tad bit tacky. It is slightly colder out than it probably should have been for me to paint. So at this point, I'm not going to do anything else to screw up what I've got going on so far. I'm going to let this uh, truck dry and set up overnight. I'll be back out here in the shop first thing in the morning. That way we can start blowing everything else apart, start getting this thing to a point where we can get that engine back in the truck. Um, I'm going to try to find some kind of coating for those uh, manifolds there because at this point, those are the ugliest looking things. They're going to be in this engine compartment. I, need, I do not want that. So, But like I said, I'm going to let this stuff set up. I'm going to head inside. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new and you've made it this far, hit that subscribe button for me. Uh, don't forget to ring that little bell on upcoming videos. And uh, I do plan on getting back on the 58 real soon. I do not want to let that thing sit. Uh, you know, a bunch of other little projects out here. But right now, this is, is kind of like my main purpose to get this thing up and going. But anyways, thank you guys for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I appreciate all your support. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys again for hanging out. And um, I'll catch you on the next one.